Hi everyone, I am here with Colleen Jorgensen and I am going to read her title because it is a beautiful title that I don't want to botch. Certified professional pain care educator. She is an osteopath, Pilates and yoga therapist. Colleen, how are you? I'm very good, Rhonda. How are you? Good. Did I get that title down right? You got it perfect. <laughs> okay. And these are important titles, especially for me. I'm, I've been worked with you for years and years and years. And um, uh, for, for, for my lower back pain, to be honest. And right now I do have pain, but I can't see anybody that generally helps me. Osteo, athletic therapist, whatever. You are a West Island therapist. And how do we manage our pain during a time when we can't visit those healthcare practitioners that give us a hand? So it's exactly why I wanted to have this conversation together because so many people are in that boat. The good news is that there is tons that you can do for yourself. And even though it's wonderful to be able to go to someone like myself, who's an osteo, a physio, whatever, we're only with you for one hour, maybe one time a week. You're living in your own body 24 seven, your whole life. So the more that you can learn how to do for yourself, the better. So maybe this is gonna push some of us to go towards it. So there's quite a few things we can do, but I, I would say the most important thing to start with is to make a plan. You should have three things that are in that plan. Like a written plan? I would do a written plan, something that you can check back with, yes. So the first thing is you need to figure out, write down a few of the things that allow you to distract away from the pain, that completely take your mind off it. So for some people, it might be hanging out with their pet. It might be watching a good movie. You know, it could be absolutely anything. It doesn't have to be therapeutic. Not necessarily something that your, your person would listening prescribe to, music, to you. Listening to music with the earbuds on or something. Exactly. Absolutely anything that distracts you away from your pain so your brain is not thinking about it. That would be your first thing on the list. Second thing is write down a few things that allow you to calm your system. So that's a little bit different for everyone, but typically the things that work best are different types of breath work, body awareness practices, meditation, mindfulness, those sorts of things that, you know, the beauty is that right now, there's so much of that available online. So you can sort of look around, see who resonates with you. Not everyone fits with everyone. You've got to find the right person that their voice speaks to you, their intonation speaks to you, their energy. There is someone out there for you. So keep looking if you haven't found that person yet. So first thing is things that distract you. Second things, second is the things that calm your system. And third thing is we need to bring ourselves to the edge of that pain. So if we always only do things that keep us from thinking about the pain, that's not gonna cut it. It's not gonna just fade away into the distance, unfortunately. We have to go and say hello to it. We have to introduce ourselves to the pain. We have to remember that pain is your own body trying to have a conversation with you. It's not this foreign entity that's out there to destroy you. It's not our enemy. We have to figure out how to develop a relationship with it, how to become allies with that pain because it's a signal. It's your nervous system trying to tell you, okay, hey, Colleen, something's going on and I need you to pay attention. So you have to find things. It could be movement. It could be some of the practices we just talked about that actually bring you into the pain a little bit, but not so far that it feels dangerous to you. Can you give me an example? Yes. So we talk a lot about feeling safe. A lot of being in pain is the nervous system trying to protect you. And the nervous system's number one role in life is to protect us. The problem is it doesn't only protect us from actual danger, it will protect us from anything that it thinks might maybe possibly be dangerous. So if you one time went for a walk, or actually this is a perfect example. I was at a movie one day, we were there early and there was five elderly women behind me. And so there was no one else in the theater so I couldn't help but hear their conversation. And one of the women was saying that she picked up her cat and hurt her back. And so she said, I will never pick up my cat again. And it almost brought tears to my eyes because I know how often this happens that she's probably picked up a cat thousands and thousands of times in her life and it was a positive experience, but our system is going to hang on to that one negative experience because that was dangerous and it wants to always protect us from danger. So in her situation, I wish I could have entered into a conversation and let her know, no, you know what, you can pick up your cat again, but the next time you go to do it, you might have to reassure your system a little bit. So maybe before picking up her cat, she could visualize herself, imagine herself picking up her cat and feeling good and, and thinking about the sensation of hugging the fur and how it's always been positive. And then as you're doing it, you could literally be talking to yourself and say, you know what, I've done this so many times and it was fine. It's going to be good this time. And it may or may not be. It's possible that it might again have a negative experience, 
but understand that that's one experience. It doesn't now have to dictate that that's the way it's going to be every single time you try that movement for the rest of your life. Does that my make sense? Yes. My instincts are to not move, even though I know moving makes me feel better. My instincts are to move less. And I'm so glad you said that because that is everybody's instinct. And my husband pointed out to me this morning, he said, even when I go to the, when he goes to the doctor, that's what they say. If I tell them I have pain when I do this, they literally say to you, well, don't do that. And I've said that myself in, in, in my career in the past. And so we've created this, um, this misconception that that's what we're supposed to do. But think about it. If you never do a particular movement, you will never, ever, ever be able to do that movement. If you never try it again, you are guaranteed that you'll never be able to do it again. So I think about it very much like, imagine you want to go into a pool or a lake, but you're not ready to fully dive in. So you dip your toe in the water, you test out the temperature, you kind of get a feel for how deep or how shallow it is. You're giving yourself that opportunity to create a sense of safety before you say, okay, now I'm ready to put my whole body in. It's the same thing with movement. You have to figure out, okay, if walking is the thing you want to get back to, but walking always challenges you, it makes your pain worse. So figure out, okay, well, how long did I walk for? So let's say you went for 20 minutes. Well, okay, maybe 20 minutes is too long to start with. So you have to sort of do a little bit of trial and error, back out and see, okay, well, what if I do five minutes? Can I do five minutes and not make my pain worse? If you're someone who's in chronic pain, you've got pain all the time. So you can't expect that you're going to walk and feel nothing because you always have pain anyways for many. So use the barometer of, well, does it make it worse? And if it doesn't make it worse, then okay, let me start with five minutes. And instead of trying to do 15 at a time, try to do five minutes, two or three times a day. And you'll, you'll gradually start to decrease the danger sensations around that movement or that activity. And your system will start to recognize that, oh, okay, this is something that we can do. The more time you have success, the easier it will be to have success. So that of course works. We're reteaching ourselves. Exactly. Because anything your nervous system learns, and the thing with chronic pain is the nervous system has learned very well how to be in pain. It's really, really good at being in pain for you. So we need to teach it how to not be in pain. And that takes time. It's not a quick fix. It's not a magic bullet, unfortunately. You have to think of it almost like a dimmer switch. You're trying to find ways to, to bring the intensity down, bring those edges down a little bit. Over time, it starts to change. If you introduce something new, whether it's that breath work, mindfulness, movement, any of those things, it takes really realistically two to six weeks before you're really going to see and feel a change. So a lot of people get dis discouraged that they don't get that immediate relief. It's just not the way that it works. But believe me, I promise you, you are bringing that excitement that noisy nervous system down every time you do these practices and then it will be less reactive to all of the other things that you try to do does that make sense yeah it does actually okay good so for the short term you want us to try and move, try and move and what if you can't okay so if, that's a good question so if you can't visualization works very well so now that we have functional mri we can do scans of the brain and see what areas are lighting up when people do movement or when they think and what we found is that even when you think of doing a movement, it lights up the same parts of the brain, the same muscles activate as though you were doing the movement. They don't activate to the exact same intensity, but the exact same muscles will fire. So again, let's say you wanna get back to skiing. You can lie in your bed and you can visualize yourself skiing. Notice as you do that, does your breath start to get labored? Does it start, do you start to hold your breath? Do you start to get very quick with your breath? If so, that's your system thinking, oh my God, even thinking about skiing is dangerous. So I'm warning my person. So you reassure yourself, you wait until the breath calms down and then you keep visualizing. Second thing to check in with is your body tension. As you're thinking of doing that action, did you notice that you started to clench your jaw? You started to frown. You're squeezing the fingers or toes, clenching the butt. Anywhere in the body might've gotten tense. Notice it, take a moment to let that calm down and then keep visualizing. And then the last thing is check in with your mind. As you're just thinking about this action, is there a, a whole story that your brain is creating for you? Something like, oh my God, if I pick up my cat again, I'm going to throw my back out. Or if I ski again, I'm going to be in pain for three weeks after. If that starts to happen, you notice it, no judgment, but with kindness and self-compassion, just try to reassure your system, no, 
eventually we're going to be able to do this again and it's gonna be a positive experience for us. So one is just imagining yourself doing it. Two, you can watch someone else doing that activity and monitor all those things in your system as you're doing that. Or if you're lucky enough, maybe you have videotape of yourself doing that action and watch that. So that would be the, the third step. Okay, so how do we get in touch with you if we need advice or how do we get, how do we get through this time when we're alone and we're doing these things and we wanna get back to running or we wanna start things? How do we get in touch with you to get more information or follow you? So for me, um, it, a couple of ways you can reach me on email. Uh, I, could we put it up somewhere after or do you want me to yeah. say that? You can okay. say it um, anyway, say it out just, just to okay. say. So it's C-O-L-J-O-R-G-E-N-S-E-N 13 at gmail.com. If you're friends with me on Facebook, you can message me. And I've also created a YouTube channel under my personal name, Colleen Jorgensen. And I've been posting one practice every single day. Most of them are between two and 10 minutes. And I've done a few full length classes. So that's all available. I think there's over 35 practices now available on YouTube. Pick one or two that you feel comfortable with. Pick what resonates with you on that day. And then can I share a couple of other resources, Rhonda, Absolutely. that are great for people? Absolutely. Painbc.ca is a wonderful organization. Their website is full of great information. And as of this week, they have started offering um, live classes of gentle movement for people in pain. I'm actually going to be teaching for them um, at the end of May. I don't have that date yet. I'll let you know. Uh, so PainBC, lifeisnow.ca. Neil Pearson is the one who runs that. He's actually my pain care mentor. Fabulous, fabulous work. Because you, personally, you personally live in pain. Enter me for, yes, I personally live in pain. Yes, for 10 years now. Um, so I have a whole new appreciation for what everyone I've been working with has been dealing with. Uh, so Neil Pearson has five free steps on his website. Right now, he's, he actually has a full program that normally costs $100, but he's given free access to professionals. So I can share that with you during this COVID crisis for free. And it's a fabulous, very well comprehensive program. Um, last one is the NOI group, NOI.com, NOI.com. I'm not 100% sure about that, but Neuro Orthopedic Institute of Australia, another great resource. Okay. Does that okay. answer your question? Yes, it does. And we'll get on that. And um, okay. anything else you want to add? So much. I could go on about this for 10 hours, but I think that's good for today. Oh, no. I would like to say that again. You can head over to your YouTube channel. Yes. I would like to say one more thing. So after you make your plan, two things about that. A lot of people, when they make a plan, if they're not able to stick to their plan, there's a lot of self-judgment that comes in. Self-judgment is simply another stressor to your system. So you make a plan and that is a goal, but it's a fluid goal because with chronic pain, it's changing all the time. So be kind to yourself. If you made a plan, but you didn't get to it that day or you didn't do it fully that day, it's okay. Meet yourself with kindness and self-compassion, not with any judgment. And then the last thing is maybe one of your goals could be that try to aim for five minutes of breath work, two to three times per day, and 10 minutes of body awareness, two times a day. Okay. You start with that and you build slowly. Okay. okay. Thanks for this. You're very I welcome. Thank you. I wish you the great rest of your day. Thank you. You too, Rhonda. It's a sunny one. <laughs> Thank it is funny. Hopefully we're going to stay like that. And one day it'll be, it'll be above zero, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. Soon we'll yeah. be inside doing our breath work. Maybe, maybe, maybe by June. <laughs> maybe by June. All right. That's Colleen Jor Jorgensen, osteopath, certified professional pain care educator, educator. And you can reach her at her, on her YouTube channel or on Facebook. Check her out. She's uh, one of our community members and dealing with these issues of pain is something that's dear to her heart, yeah. part of her life and part of her, her mission. It is. Thank you, Rhonda. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>